on following the Trench Kids Obstacle Race at the Guam Raceway Park in Jigo on Saturday. Matza Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, Debcor finally free from a federal consent decree. Another person comes forward alleging clergy sex abuse. And Senator Michael Sinicholas and the governor go another round over money to pay tax refunds. Hafre and welcome everyone. If you're watching us on KUAM TV 8 and a special hello to all our online viewers streaming our newscast on Facebook Live. Yeah, make sure to add comments and hit the reaction emoji as we report tonight's stories to let us and other KUAM fans know how you feel about tonight's news in real time. History well, is made after the books are closed on a decades-old consent decree against the Department of Corrections. The case lasting for a quarter of a century. The case is terminated. This is a wonderful day, not just for the Department of Corrections or for, uh, for all the stakeholders, but this is a win for the, for the community. More than one dozen people cheered inside the courtroom the moment District Court of Guam Chief Judge Francis Tadinko Gatewood granted the joint motion to dismiss the 1991 right, consent done. decree case with DEPCOR at the Department of Justice. You know, I come back 26 years later as Attorney General. I signed the original one back in 91. And to have Judge Gaywood say the words, this case is dismissed and closed, was uh, exuberating. You know, it's hard to put words into it. A great feeling. It was 26 years ago the federal government filed suit against the prison for violating the constitutional rights of the population. The order to improve practices and conditions related to sanitation, fire safety, and access to medical, mental, and dental health care. It's the health care services both GMH and the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center are taking on. It's a great paradigm shift because it used to be inmates. But now, I mean, it's, and now that we're really involved in this process and in the care, they really are patients. We have started the, uh, the working uh, processes for, for this eventual takeover by Guam Behavioral Health, so we're, we're prepared to take over. The many involved in the case also gathering at Adaloo Thursday afternoon to celebrate the closure of the case, including several longtime officers. All three of us have been in GAC since 1991. <laughs> so we've seen it start, and now we've seen it end. The decision offering some major relief to the government. We worked on the operational end and the financial end, but with, uh, again, the expertise and the guidance and working through the legal matters, we want to thank great you so much. God bless you and congratulations. What a great, great Easter present for everybody. Yeah. While legislation has been introduced to ensure the health care concerns remain on track, the department is now in the procurement stage to cap off the last of the electronic locking mechanisms. That's, of course, after they deal with a slight delay, a protest filed by one of the vendors wanting to take on the job. Also, the department on Wednesday is put on notice by GFD as they still don't have a working fire system. Basically, it's a notice of, of awareness that there is a hazard that exists. Um, and with that hazard, the way it's managed is by putting in a fire watch. Despite those ongoing issues, no doubt today's ruling district court has paved the way for change at the prison. You're always going to have problems in any institution, any government, any house, any family. Uh, but it's not those problems that define us, it's how we deal with them. We've got great leadership working with a great team. A team that has now promised they will leave no room for DEPCOR to backslide again. A recent attack at the prison calls into question the actions of the population and staff at the MAX unit. Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio responding today to the ongoing criminal and internal affairs investigations underway after detainee Justin Mena was found badly beaten at Post 6 Yard Area last month. While the investigation is coming to a close, Tenorio says he's confident those found responsible in the attack will be held accountable. Every prison across the nation, we, find, we have attacks on prisoners. Uh, we we uh, continue to try to contain and adopt policies that reduce, if not eliminate, but it's very difficult to eliminate in a prison environment where you have people who get creative on, and creating weapons. Or, or uh, if, you, if you have an individual, again, who as an employee has failed to follow the procedure, then they need to be held accountable. Mental remains critical at GMH. Depcor says they do have suspects, but have yet to release further details. 
As for Wednesday's drowning in agate waters, Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Aurelia Espinola is anticipated to conduct an autopsy on Friday morning. According to reports from the Guam Fire Department, the 18-year-old was free diving with others when he became unconscious and unresponsive. A private boat brought him back to shore and he was transported to Naval Hospital. DOE Superintendent John Fernandez confirms the teen is a student at Southern High School. It's over a decade old case, but defendants in the Blue House Lounge brothel are still appearing in court. In for History repeats itself for ex-cop Anthony Kanga. A total of more than 30 years, but they'll all run concurrent. This wasn't his first, but second time being sentenced for his role in the Blue House Lounge brothel case. Guam's first ever human trafficking ring. Kanga won parts of his appeal in the Supreme Court of Guam, which remanded his case back to Judge Anita Sokola's courtroom. Despite serving over four years behind bars, he still showed no remorse. The whole time I've been there, all I've been doing is praying. Praying for the healing of these young women. The Holy Spirit give them the strength and courage to come forward and tell the truth. The truth that would one day set me free to be with my family again. I live my life. While today may have felt like deja vu, there was an exception. On the stand in his defense, former chief of police Paul Suba vouched for Kanga's character. From everything I know of the man, uh, very professional. He was actually uh, a morale builder. He uh, kept uh, the people within his team or his precinct, uh, you know, focused on their job. But not only that, in a way that he brought enthusiasm and uh, never showed any deviation from professional character. Defense attorney Sylvia Stake also asked the court to reconsider the evidence from trial. I put the um, defendant on the stand only for the purpose of demonstrating the scars that he obtained from an operation and from, um, I think, the motorcycle accident. But none of the girls who said that they had some kind of contact with him or sexual um, relationship uh, ever saw any scars, and they're pretty prominent. Remorseful or not, Prosecutor Jonathan Kwan reminded Kanga was convicted by a jury of his peers. The community must know that and be assured that our police officers, those sworn to protect and serve us, are also bound to comply with the same rules that they enforce. Kanga had served over two decades on the force prior to his conviction. He is 48 years old today. That means he'll be 74 years old when he's released from prison. Another former altar boy and Boy Scout sues for clergy sex abuse. J.D. alleges he was around 10 years old when he was sexually molested by Father Louis Brilliard in the early 1970s. Brilliard was a priest at San Isidro Catholic Church in Malolo at the time. J.D. recalls being forced to sleep on the priest's bed during sleepovers at the convent and waking up to Brilliard molesting him there and during scouting events. J.D. marks the 49th plaintiff since local law was changed to lift the civil statute of limitations on child sex abuse cases. J.D. is suing for $10 million. He is represented by attorneys David Lujan and Gloria Rudolph. A man involved in last month's stabbing at Hemlani Harmon Apartments pleaded not guilty to a slew of charges, including attempted murder and aggravated assault. 29-year-old Rayof Sultan is accused of stabbing a 26-year-old man within one of the apartment units. The two had reportedly been fighting before the stabbing occurred. Sultan asserted his rights to a speedy trial and a criminal trial setting has been set for April 18th at 2 p.m. before Judge Maria Senzon. A 28-year-old woman was busted with drugs and drug paraphernalia when she was pulled over by members of a U.S. Marshals Task Force who were conducting a surveillance on a fugitive. Although Sarah Kikuchi was not the person they were looking for, inside her car they found glass pipes, plastic straws, a digital scale, multiple syringes and drugs. The license plates also didn't match up with her car. Guam police was contacted and Kikuchi was arrested on Tuesday. She was picked up on multiple felony drug charges. Well, one concert promoter wants his money back. Saipan Stephen Brownstein doing business as Stephen Brownstein Entertainment is suing two individuals for failing to bring reggae band UB40 to Guam and Saipan back in 2015. Named defendants are Jason H. Aldon and Raw Candy Hawaii and Frederick Holloman of California's Shea Entertainment Manager, according to the that's all according to the complaint filed in the District Court of the Northern Mariana Islands. 
Brownstein paid $115,000 to secure the concert dates, but the two names defendants failed to pay the band, who as a result canceled the shows. This scheme involving a well-known art recording artist had a significant impact on the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. UB40 is famous for hits Kingston Town and Red Red Wine. A showdown looms over the governor's proposal to borrow money to pay tax refunds. And the main critic of the plan is Senator Mike Sinicholas laid out his opposition in a speech Thursday before the Rotary Club. Nestor Laconto reports. The governor wants lawmakers to authorize a $75 million tax and revenue anticipation note to front load the payment of tax refunds at the start of the year, Calvo said, instead of making payment as cash comes in at scattered points. Calvo said the loan would be paid by the end of the year through revenue from the course of the previous 12 months. So Nicholas is opposed in principle. It's not necessarily with respect to his proposal, it's just in general. Uh, any kind of measure that were to come before the body that seeks to borrow for operations, I would be apprehensive towards. The administration says people have a right to their refunds, and every week they field calls from people making personal appeals. I understand Senator Nicholas. I understand in how he has done things in the past, and we've planned for it. So what we're hopeful for, that uh, as we have moved in our game plan, uh, by late May or early June, uh, if we are to get eight votes, then tax refunds will be going out. It's no secret that GovGuam has had a continuing cash flow problem. The governor argues that his proposed note would be a useful tool that not only ensures timely tax refund payments, but also will help the government manage its money. If we're able to manage with less back then, we need to reevaluate where we were and how we were doing that and make sure that we're taking the, the steps necessary to be able to have the money for refunds without borrowing. So Nicholas points to the budget, which he says has ballooned from $700 million to $900. He remains convinced that the note will not guarantee the cash will be managed properly, but may only make the situation worse. But the governor is calling the legislature to action, and a special session is set for April 28 to address his bill to authorize the $75 million note. If folks don't get their tax refunds and all in the status A by uh, late May, early June, uh, then the first folks they should call is uh, number one, starting with Senator Sinek. Sure. Uh, that Because that would be the one individual at this point who seems to be hell-bent on stopping this legislation moving forward. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Laconto. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more news after the break. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Have you gotten paid yet? That's the premium automatic insurance deduction plan from Calvo's Insurance. Paid simplifies your home and auto insurance. No down payment. No more long lines. And you can stretch your payments up to 12 months. Paid is convenient. It deducts from your payroll, your checking account, or your credit card. With Paid, you get up to 65% off your car insurance and enjoy lifestyle club discounts. Life can be easier when you get paid. Call Calvo's Insurance today and save on your home and auto insurance. Two things come to play when talking about mobile data, price and speed. Let's look at what happens when we compare the competition against it &E's $80 plan. Docomo's $79 plan comes with 6 gigs. it &E's $80 plan comes with 20. GTA's $80 plan comes with 10 gigs. Better, but you get twice as much at it and &E. it &E has the best network and the data to back it up. Get unlimited talk and text and 20 gigabytes for $80 at it and &E. Oh, and if you bring your own device, get 40 gigs. Get more during our spring clearance event going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Inherit that go anywhere attitude with the legendary rugged Jeep Wrangler 4x4 of the decade. For a limited time only, enjoy savings of $2,500 off. Or go beast mode and save up to $5,000 off Ram trucks voted Guam's best two years in a row. Plus, well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing. Get to Cars Plus today for quick and easy financing during our spring clearance event. Cars Plus, driven by you. There is no place on Guam like Chuck E. Cheese's. It's tons of fun with so many games. And parties are a blast. Where everyone has fun. Come and party at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Call and book your party today. 
Enjoy an afternoon under the sun for the USO's 8th annual Golf for Our Heroes Tournament presented by title sponsor GTA. Golf alongside USO Guam's top supporters, volunteers, and members from our military community on Thursday, April 20th at the Onward Telefofo Golf Course. Join us on the green for a chance to win some epic prizes, including two United Airlines round-trip tickets to Asia or Micronesia. We thank the community of Guam in supporting USO's mission to connect service members to family, home, and country. See our website or call for more details. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. Plaintiffs from Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico filed their opening brief before the U.S. Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, challenging what they say is discriminatory overseas voting laws. They contend that where you live should not impact your right to vote for president. They point to federal and state laws that allow former state residents to cast absentee ballots in the CNMI, American Samoa, and even foreign countries, but not in Guam or Puerto Rico. Lead attorney and former Guam resident Neil Ware said in a statement that he is is, quote, optimistic that the Seventh Circuit will recognize that the right to vote is fundamental for all Americans, including those in U.S. territories. The suit is part of a broader effort by Weir's We Are the People project that seeks equal representation for the more than 4 million residents in the U.S. territories who are unable to vote for president. Heads up, attorneys, this Friday is the deadline for lawyers to submit their letter of interest if they want to serve as legal counsel with the Guam Election Commission. GEC Executive Director Maria Pangolinan says legal counsel is essential to the commission so that they can meet all mandates during elections. The current legal counsel, Jeff Cook, told the GEC last month he plans to step down to avoid any conflicts after his wife, Lulian Guerrero, announced she's making a run for Adeloupe. Again, the deadline is tomorrow, and the commission will review the letters from those interested during their April 20th meeting. The 2015 Cavers 3 and 4 explosion continues to impact continue to impact the Guam Power Authority's finances in fiscal year 2016. According to the findings of an audit released today, the agency experienced a $7 million net loss. There were some concerns involving procurement deficiencies, such as no evidence of how a vendor was selected, sole source procurement, and 536000 in purchase order amendments that exceeded the general manager's approval threshold and required appro approval by the Consolidated Commission on Utilities. The report also noted 241000 thousand dollars of inactive accounts receivables having corresponding active accounts in the GPA system and performance management contractors expenditures that were incurred before the purchase orders were issued. Despite these issues, GPA complied with major federal programs, received a clean audit and achieved low risk auditee status. Well, Chris, here's a story that had many concerns today, but Guam Homeland Security Advisor George Sharford is saying there are no immediate threats to Guam at this time. The new HSA says his office, along with the Mariana Regional Fusion Center and their federal and military partners, are closely monitoring the recent events around the world, including North Korea. Charfers asked the community to be vigilant and that if you see anything suspicious, to report it to local law enforcement and the, at the MRFC website. The Republic of Singapore Air Force and the U.S. Air Force are participating in a joint exercise from now until May 11th. This is the first time they've actually deployed aircraft and personnel to Guam. Congressman Madeleine Berdalio says discussions about the training began last summer. She adds, this engagement further demonstrates that Guam's strategic location allows allies and partners to interact and train with U.S. personnel and equipment on and in American soil waters and airspace without leaving the region. The Guam Land Use Commission approved a total $4 million worth of infrastructure improvements for two tentative subdivisions planned for Dededo and Jigo areas. The first request by COA Inc. and it aims to build 86 single-family residential lots in Jigo. The second application by Guam Five Star Corporation would support construction of 160 family homes in Dededo and Jigo. Commissioner Tai O. Just wanted to make a note that this uh, approval is only for the improvements to infrastructure, not including housing as, as agreed. Okay. An estimated $1.7 million will go towards improvements for the first tentative subdivision, while $2.3 million will go toward the second. Some planned improvements include adding roadways, ponding basins, utilities, and sewer infrastructure.
both survived the Japanese occupation of World War II and have now become the third and fourth individuals to receive their honorary high school diplomas. Conception Kitsunidza received the designation by board chair Peter Atta and Superintendent John Fernandez in front of her family and friends. Today, after the war, Kitsunidza was no was known of her skill with Chamorro medicine. She met her husband, Gonzalo Quintanitza, who was also honored. The couple have 11 children, 25 grandchildren, and 52 great-grandchildren. The program started in 2005 and honors individuals who were unable to complete their education due to hardship fa hardships faced during World War II. Wow, great job to her. Well, coming up in sports, Chris has details to the upcoming Trench Kids, but first, here's a look at weather. The strongest teams have the strongest fans. We're committed to keeping you close, even when you're not. GTA Strong. There's a reason why you keep going. When it's your own hard work that brought you to this point. You do everything to protect what you've earned. Because every move that brings you closer to your goals leaves you no excuse but to keep moving forward. This is what makes you an Alpha. How much do you pay for your unlimited mobile plan? Too much! Switch today to Value Mobile at $24.99 a month. It's the lowest priced unlimited mobile plan on Guam. Yes. $24.99. Value Mobile by iConnect gives you unlimited data, local calls, and local text, and a free phone, all with no contract. Value Mobile by iConnect, the lowest priced unlimited mobile plan at only $24.99 a month. Visit an iConnect store or valuemobileguam.com. Find us on Facebook. Conditions apply. Hey, smart spenders. Shell's Buy Food Get Fuel promo is back. And this time, Shell's giving away grocery coupons, too. Shell has partnered up with Cost You Less and Island Fresh to help you save. Spend $30 at any Cost You Less or Island Fresh and receive coupons for $5 off of your next $30 fuel purchase at any Shell station or purchase $30 of fuel at Shell and receive a coupon for $5 off any $75 Cost You Less or Island Fresh store purchase. Visit Shell, Cost You Less, or Island Fresh today and start stacking on savings. Some conditions apply. See stores for details. People are talking about the new Buick. With four fresh new models to choose from. And what are they saying? The new Buick is so cute. Love the new Buick. That's a Buick? Sweet Buick. Experience the new, new Buick. Get 16% below MSRP on select 2017 Buick SUVs in stock. That's over 6,600 below MSRP on this Envision. Visit Autospot Buick today. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Dan, 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 whoop, here it is. Triple J proudly presents KUAM Sports, see Chris Barnanza, and let's get right to it. I'm going to tell you where your kids, your children, can find the golden egg this Easter. Trench kids going down this Saturday at the Guam International Raceway in Jigo from 7 in the morning to 9.30. The mini obstacle course race exclusively for the little children. 4 to 11 years old, kids get a chance to tackle up to 10 different obstacles and terrain challenges on the motocross track. At the finish, they get their medal. Kellen Wreckett Ralph, sponsored by the Bank of Guam. Refreshments from Triple J, 5-star wholesale and foremost, plus a Hafaloa design participant dry fit. Awards given to the top three boys and girls finishers in each division. Registration closed with 330 participants already signed up. Packet pickup takes place at Hafaloa and Tumon tomorrow. 
from 6 to 10 p.m. And hey, guess what? You get a free soft serve or small shave ice. After Trench Kids Obstacle Course uh, at 11, the activities shift into a free open to the public Easter egg hunt with the stations of KWAM prizes given out to the kids to find the marked eggs. There's going to be vendors on site selling food, snacks, and drinks. Fun for the whole family. Plenty of parking and free admission. Close to 50 competitors taking part in the 2017 Guam National Full Contact Karate Championship held at the St. Paul Gym. Participants as young as 8 years old stepped onto the mats to display their martial arts skills. Brothers Sean and Ethan Eshang representing the Jigo Dojo at the competition. Ethan competed in the 12-13 to year old division placing second. First place went to Gary Rodriguez. Ballers lace up for the Barragata Fiesta 3-on-3 Hoops Tournament set for April 21st to the 23rd at the Barragata Community Center. Games start on Friday the 21st for the men's and women's U18 divisions beginning at 6 in the evening. Entrance fee, 40 bucks per team. Now to register online, 3x3planet.com. That's 3x3planet.com. For those who register online, earn points towards FIBA rankings. Deadline to sign up online, April 20th. Participants can also come by the Barragata Mayor's Office to pick up registration forms Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. For more info, contact Ray LG at 747-1515 or the Barragata Mayor, 734-3737 or 3859. Top two teams in each division gets cash prizes. All right, thanks for joining me on this Holy Thursday. Remember, tomorrow you better be good. Good Friday. Till then, you keep on shining. Guam, Guam, see Chris. Adios. Next time, Aww. you've got a refund. Yeah! You checked the mail? Aww. Haven't got your refund yet? During Nissan's 17th Annual Easy 1040 Refund Event, everybody gets a refund up to $7,000 cash with your new Nissan. Use it towards your down payment, drop the price, or take the cash. The Nissan Easy 1040 Refund Event going on now, where everybody gets a refund. Take your guest drive today or get the details at NissanGuam.com.